Hi, I'm Tom Coleman, Chief Learning Architect for Articulate. And today we're going to look at how to use Content Library in Articulate 360. We'll look at what you can do in Storyline with Content Library assets and templates. And then we're going to look at what you can do in Rise with the course assets and then the uh, assets available to you in your image blocks. Let's start with Storyline. So I'm inside of Storyline right now. And we'll look at a few things. First is we're going to look at how to insert content library assets. If you click on the Insert tab up here, and you can see you have all your assets available to you. I'm going to go ahead and insert a character. That just opens up the character library. Now you can see I've got a number of character styles. I have photographic, I have modern illustrated, and then I have these more cartoony classic styles. And you can see a number of filtering options down here as well. Now when you're working with the photographic characters, uh, you'll notice that some of them have blue download buttons. When you hover over it just prompts you to download that character. This character is already downloaded, so I'm going to click on her. And you'll see I can select my character. And then if I go over to Pose, I can see all the different poses available uh, for that character. And I also have some filtering options there. If I come back to Character, and let's say I want to choose an illustrated character. You can see I'm going to choose Jamal. And then you'll notice with the illustrated characters, a few options because they're illustrated and structured a different way. I can change the pose from left to right, back to front. And then I can also change the character's expressions. And you can see all the different expressions available to me. Right now, uh, the expression is alarmed. Let's go ahead and change it to thinking. And you can see now the expressions changed. I can also change the pose. I have my poses right here, and I'm going to change this and make it look like he's got his hands on his pocket. Once I'm happy, I go ahead and insert it. Once the character is on the screen, it's just like any other object. You can see I can move it around. I can scale him up or down. I can crop him. We'll go ahead and crop him, make him a little bit larger so we can see him better. And so now I can see. Here's my character. If I come up to the Design tab, I can change the character. I can dynamically change the expressions, the poses, and the perspective. Let's say I want him facing to the right, and you can see how that works. So that's working with the characters. If I come back to the Insert tab, you'll see I have photos, illustrations, icons, and videos. Regardless of what I click on, once the panel's open, I can access these without coming back in here. So I'm going to select Photo. And you can see it opened up the photo. And I was searching for dog earlier. So this is a bunch of dog photos. Uh, I can click on the drop down. There's illustrations. So now I can see dog illustrations. I can see dog icons. And I can see dog videos. And then it's just a matter of inserting those. One thing I'll point out about the icons, because they're a little bit different. We're going to come back to icons here. Some icons are single objects, and some of them are grouped objects. And that does impact how you're working with them. So this icon, for example, I can tell is most likely a single object because it just looks like one thing. So I'm going to select this dog, and I'm going to insert him. So this is this dog. And let's go ahead and insert the other dog. So I'm come back to icons. And I'm going to take this dog because it looks like it's made of multiple shapes. So I'm going to insert that dog. So now I have two. Oops, let me move him back. I have two dog shapes. They're both icons, but when we look at the timeline down here, you'll notice that this first dog we inserted is a single object. So it's just a single vector shape. And then the second dog we insert is actually a grouped object. So when I select it, you can see it's actually made up of a number of shapes. That's something to keep in mind because when you're working with these icons, uh, the ones that are single objects are easier to work with. The ones that are grouped shapes, you have to understand that it's grouped because it won't work the same way. And here's a good example. If I have this dog and I want to add a state to it, I can come to the States tab. I can add, let's say, a visited state and hit Add, and then maybe make that a different color. And then so you can see I can change the state of that object. So then I can use the triggers, change the state of that object when something happens. If I select this object, you'll notice I don't have states available to me. And the reason I don't is because if I come back to the timeline, these are made up of groups of objects. So if I click on this, then you can see that single piece 
as a state option, but um, the object as a whole doesn't. So something to keep in mind when you're working with these objects, when you insert them, you'll want to see if it's a, a single object or if it's a grouped object. There's really no other way to know it until you insert them. Usually you can tell if it's made up, if it looks like it's made up of a few different shapes or a solid shape. That's usually a, an indicator, but you won't, really won't know until you insert it. So that's working with the objects that you have available to you to insert. So you can go to Insert, Content Library, you have all these different assets available to you. The other thing you have in Content Library and Storyline is you have all these design templates. So if you go to Slides and you go to Content Library Templates, you'll notice you have a number of templates. You have all different types of slide styles that you can use. There's light and dark theme templates here. And then there's uh, you can sort them up here and you can search for a type of slide or a template. I'm going to show you something that's unique about working with these templates. So this particular template, we're going to choose this light one. We're going to choose Synergy. I'm going to choose this slide here, this three column slide. And you can see it's got this, this kind of purple color in here. I'm going to insert that. Once that slide is inserted, it, that template comes in. If you go to View, one of the things you'll notice in Slide Master that there's going to be, this is a slide template, but this slide template is the Synergy template. So we actually have two Slide Master templates in here. We have that first slide that was using the base Slide Master, and then we have this customized Slide Master using Synergy. And so you'll notice like here the fonts are different. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The other thing is whenever you insert a template or slides with these design themes, if you go to the Design tab, you'll notice that they have different colors. So this one's using the Synergy color theme. Um, if I go to this one here, which is that base slide, I'll notice that it's using the Office color theme. So I would probably want to change them to all be in the same color theme, and I would want to do that make sure they're all using the same font theme. So here's a good example of how that works. I'm going to go back to Slides, go to Content Library. Since we're using a light slide and I like these, I might want to try a different template. So maybe I like Access, but you know, Access and Synergy are two different templates. But if I come into Access, I want, you know, I kind of like this one right here. So I like this one. So I'm going to insert this one. But now what I have is I have these discordant slides. One is using the Access template, which we can see here. So it's green, the font's different. This one is using the Access or the Synergy template, and it's purple, and the fonts are different. So what you can do is decide which font and color scheme you want to use. In this case, we're going to say, I like this one that comes with uh, Synergy. So I'm going to come to this slide here. Again, if we go to View, you can look at the Slide Master and you can see that there's a Access template now. There's the third one. There's the Synergy and there's the Base template. And you can delete the ones that you're not using. That's okay, but it doesn't really matter, so I wouldn't mess with that. But we're going to come over here. We're going to do two things. We're going to put the same design theme color and the same design font pair. So let's go to Design. And on this one, instead of using Access, Access, we're going to use Synergy. And now you can see it changed to match that. And then we're going to go to Fonts, and we can see it's set to Access. We're going to use Synergy. And now you can see it matches there as well. So now when you're working with this, even though you started with different templates, if you if you are aware of the fact that they use different masters and they also use different design themes and fonts, uh, you can do some manipulation and make them look like they belong together when you mix and match templates. There's usually other tweaking you have to do, uh, but that's the basics of it. We do have a lot of uh, webinars and online training available to you to help you learn more about how to work with these templates. So take advantage of those things. But that's a really quick overview. So in Storyline, you have these, these slide templates in the Content Library. And then you also have 
the assets. Now let's look at Rise. I'm at the Articulate 360 dashboard. You'll notice when you first come in there, it's showing you all this Rise content. These are templates and free content available to you to use in your Rise courses. We're going to go ahead and create a new course. I'm just going to come up to Rise 360. And I'm going to create a new course. And I'm going to choose Course. And then you can see here are different content uh, pieces available to me. Some of them say real content. That means it's a complete course. Everything's there. You can use it exactly the way it's built. You can customize it, edit it, whatever you want to do, it's available to you. So you can start with that course. And then we have uh, some templates. So there's real content, and then we have different templates. And you can see that the ones that say templates on, like this one right here says content template. This one here says real content. The content template is just kind of like a predetermined structure to help you. Uh, and you can follow it or not follow it, really doesn't matter. Um, so that's one thing available to you, right? And you can sort them up here by course templates or real content. I'm going to go ahead and create a blank course. The other place where you can access content li libraries in the images. So if I type in a lesson and I'm going to add content and we're going to add an image. When I go up to edit the image here in the content, I'm going to edit this and I can replace from content library. And then this is where maybe I want a dog image, right? And I can insert a photo of a dog and it'll come inside here. And that'll be just like any other image that you would use in Rise. Uh, the other thing you can do is if you edit this, you go replace from content libraries, you can insert illustrations. So maybe I want a cat illustration, hit enter, and then I'm going to get different cat illustrations. I like this one. We'll go ahead and insert that. So that's uh, using content library in the various image blocks. Another way you can use content libraries if you go into the style settings here, and you can see you can create an image background for your blocks. We're going to go ahead and select that, and you can see it added a default one. We're going to edit, replace from content library, and then you can see maybe I want a tree in here, and let's see what we have. And I'll just say this one looks fine to me. We're going to insert that. Now I'm going to have a tree background and that goes with my cat image. And there you go. So a few different ways you can work with the content library. You've in Storyline, you've got the templates and all these assets. And Storyline works a little different because you have an empty slide and you can move things around. Rise is a form-based structure, so you can work with the content library images. And then you have all of those pre-built uh, templates and real content that you can use as well. So that's everything you need to know about Content Library to get started. We do have additional uh, webinars and on-demand training in our training site, so training.articulate.com. And if you ever need any help, jump in the community, community.articulate.com, and we can help you there as well.